All right, so it's come to my attention that someone who, in addition to just doing a lot with hockey, does a heck of a lot for our hockey, tabletop hockey, and also tabletop sports community, our sports sim community, is interested in learning the game Hockey Bones. So uh, I like making Hockey Bones videos. I feel like, try as I may, I'll probably never make the perfect Hockey Bones video that I'm perfectly satisfied with. So I just like to try to make them from time to time and each time try to do a better job and just do things a little differently than I had done previously in the interest of doing a better job with it. So I'm going to apologize in advance in that it's toward the end of the day here. My voice is, uh, I used my voice a lot today throughout the day, so my voice is a bit tired. Uh, but this is one of these things that, again, if I'm tr doing other things like catching up on playoff hockey, I'll be thinking about doing this. And so I just wanted to, I, I want to get this done. Uh, this same individual who's expressed interest in learning this game is also afraid of certain acronyms and certain other hockey games like ODAI. And I can understand how approaching a game like Hockey Bones, which is quite different, uh, the way that the, the, the defense works is quite different relative to that and to other hockey games, uh, how that could maybe sim be similarly a little intimidating at the outset, trying to learn how to play this. So I want to do the best I can. I'm going to, the intent of this video is to go through, try to clear up some things and also go through my own simplified version of defense that I've been using for a little while in this game anyway. But I thought I would start with officially what you get on the, uh, this is uh, basically a blown up version of what's on this game chart here. And this is the Hockey Bones team defense. And in the instruction manual as well, in the guide, it will refer from time to time to things as, as you know, you have to uh, consult the team defense. And so what the team defense is, if uh, you have a left wing or a left defenseman in possession of the puck, you're looking at the defense rating of the right wing, the right defense, and the center. You're adding up all three, and there's an adjustment to the center. If the center's defense rating is a three or four, sorry, uh, then it's adjusted down to a two interference there with the camera. If it's a, if the center's rating is a one or a two, it's adjusted to a one. And if it's a zero, it stays the same. And it, the same is true if you're the right wing or the right defense. And I will move this eventually. If you're the right wing or the right defense and you have the puck, you have possession, you're looking at the opposition's left wing, left defense, and center all added up. But then the adjustment for the center this defense rating, a three or a four is adjusted down to a two, a one or a two to a one, as I said moments ago. And then a zero would stay the same as zero. If you're the center with possession, again, looking to penetrate, looking to get a shot on goal, you're looking at the left and right defenseman of the opposition plus the center, adding up these three defense uh, ratings, values, and then subtracting two. And this gets a little closer to what I do, my simplified uh, system for this. But again, I want to look at the official one first. Uh, so th th I think in theory, because I know this is something that I found, uh, you know, distracting and puzzling when I was first trying to learn how to play the game. Think of it this way. If you're coming up the left side with the puck, you're going to be more in direct contact with the right wing and the right defense. And the center is going to be kind of reaching and we maybe even a little out of position trying to uh, chase you down or whatever and take the puck away. Uh, the right wing, the right defense, you're again, you're going up the right side. And so you're more in direct contact with the left wing and the left defense. And again, the center is compromising a little bit. Should the center be cheating a little bit over your you know, in your vicinity, then they're leaving the left side of the ice a little bit more wide open. So, yeah, so I understand for that reason, I understand the center adjustments. And similarly, I guess if you're uh, if you're the center, um, it, again, you're yeah, you're uh, the left defense, the right defense. You're subtracting two here. However, the you have the defensive values of two defensemen added up here, as opposed to only one defense for each of these two equations. And uh, the two defense tend, I mean, defensemen tend to have higher defense values than do forwards. So uh, there is that to consider as well. Uh, so and and again, I'm going to wait to get to my my simplified uh, team defense first. I just want to point out that. So on the actual game playing board, again, I want to do the official stuff first. If I'm the left wing and I have the puck, I'm just looking at these three in a line. I'm looking at the opposition's right wing defense value uh, rating plus the right defense plus the center. And if I'm the right wing with the puck, then I'm looking at left wing plus left defense plus center. Center adjusted, I should, should clarify there. And if I'm the center... Then again, I'm sort of just looking in a straight line, I guess, or directly across to these one, two, three here, all adjacent to one another, the right defense, the center, and the left defense, if I'm the center with the puck, uh, trying to get to the net. So 
uh, I I played a little differently, and so I'm going to at this point, <laughs> you know, transition to how I do it and how I look at it. And I have, of course, a lot of games up now with this project, particularly pretty much all of them, except for a couple, I think have been uh, videoed in one way or another. Uh, and so when I'm playing, like when you watch me doing a game on the fly, and this is a bit simplified because I don't have goalies and I don't have the score, but I just wanted to do it this way to demonstrate. I might even zoom in actually a little bit, uh, maybe back out a little bit now. Darn it. I like it. How I liked it. I like it. How I had it originally. Anyway, uh, so basically I, I look for triangles. I see triangles. I mentioned this in one other uh, video, but, uh, what I mean by that is let's see the Vic have field again. The left wing has the puck. So we're reverting back to this. Uh, I'm looking at the defensive, uh, rating of Ken Hodge, which is one plus Don Ori, the right defense here, which is three. So that adds up to four and then the center fill Esposito two. I'm going to adjust that to a one. So that's the defense value of five. Uh, and, uh, if, uh, and that would be the same if I were Harry Howell with the puck, I'm still competing against this defense value of five. If I'm Hadfield or Howell, both on the left side here, if I'm Rod Gilbert, I'm looking to Bobby or John Busick and Phil Esposito or his defense rating of four, John Busick here too. Cause again, and the reason why I'm doing that again, Gilbert is on the right side. So I got to look to the left wing, the left defense and the center. So Bobby or four, John Busick two and Phil Esposito one that adds up to seven. Similarly for Jim Nelson being the right defense on the right side, I would look to Bobby or John Busick and Phil Esposito. If I'm John Rattel with the puck, I'm looking to Phil Esposito, Bobby Orr, and Don Ori minus two. So two, six, nine, subtracts to seven. And so that's how it works, you know, the adjustment with the with the team defense. Uh, and just to demonstrate a little bit here, so if we take and we look at Vic Hadfield's carrot up close, and again for Hadfield, three plus one plus two, but this two adjusts to a one, so it's a five. Here, this is a pass value of two. So I'm just actually just looking at the intimidation bars here. Three intimidation means that Hatfield would turn the puck over. Should a uh, blue one and then the white dice adding up to two be rolled. Uh, that's a penalty. This is another pass value. But again, you have to exceed the, inti uh, the intimidation bars. So again, the puck would be turned over. Uh, H8 as well, because Hatfield, I keep the visitor over here. So because Hatfield is not at home, He's also going to turn the puck over in this case. This would, you know, mean that he's denote that he's a little weaker on the road. P3 we talked about. This one here is an automatic shot. When you get this, you don't even have to look at the defense that I just pointed out. You're just shooting in the net automatically. This here would be a play stoppage, icing, infraction. P4, now this here, he will be able to, again, three intimidation bars. So this P4 here, Havfield will complete the pass successfully. Uh, age seven, again, it's not going to matter because he's not at home. So you can stop looking. This is a shot with a possible rebound automatically. Maybe Hadfield has done a shot pass like Mitch Marner did earlier, getting the puck over to Austin Matthews for the game winning goal uh, with Toronto there against Tampa Bay. Age six, again, at home, not going to matter. P3, maybe I didn't choose the best card. Here we go. Because P3, it's going to be turned over again to the defense and, and uh, the team defense uh, doesn't factor in here for the, for these ones here. All the ones that I just showed, the team defense actually does not factor in because Havfield is on the road. And because here for the P, the passing, you're just looking at the intimidation. You're not looking at the team defense. However, hold on. Uh, here, this here, so here, blue die value of one and the uh, white dice adding up to four. That's a 14 that is much higher than a six. Havfield has a shot on goal. This is a play stoppage with a possible injury. We're not looking at the team defense, but eight, that's a shot. 10, that's a shot. Six is where it gets interesting because again, three, four, five, six, but that's adjusted to a five. So that's a shot. 11, that's going to be a shot on goal. 13 will be a shot on goal. X, that'll be a penalty. Seven and nine, again, shot, shot. D9, this one here, you're not looking at the team defense. What you're doing here is you're looking to Bobby Orr and Don Ori and their defense adds up to seven. So here, in this case, Havfield, again, will have a shot on goal. 11 is a shot. That's a shot automatically. This is not a shot in this case because Vic Havfield is not playing at home. Were Vic Havfield playing at home, that would be a shot. Uh, shot with a possible rebound. Again, here, you don't have to look at the team defense. This D6, you're also not looking at the team defense because, again, you're not, you don't have to look 
at the right wing plus right defense plus center adjusted. Uh, when it's a D on the card, you're just purely looking at the two blue liners. So instead of him trying to maneuver, you know, his side of the ice or whatever, what he's doing, I, I read and interpret this as just trying to penetrate the defense, trying to split the defense, the defense and only the defense there in this case. So D6 would not get it done. And uh, D7 would because and I was hoping this would come up and finally it has equal to or greater than. So seven here and seven. And again, that's also explained on uh, the game chart, which it's yeah, equal to or greater than the uh, left defense plus the right defense uh, defense ratings. So uh, Vic Hadfield, if he's not on the power play, you can stop looking here and turn the puck over. If he is in the power play, he's probably completed a pass. Unless you're using the pressure offense, which I've never done, in which case that might generate a shot. Uh, this at symbol, though, which I skipped over and shouldn't have, in this case, Vic Hadfield, I interpret this as he's handed it off to a teammate and he's trying to penetrate and get into position. Sorry, I should hold that a little closer to the camera. So in this case uh, here, uh, if I look here, pass bonus of one and pass bonus of one, that adds up to two. The defense don't have any pass bonus. So here I would look to a red die roll. And if the red die is a one or a two, then it means that Hadfield will have a shot and if it's three, four, five, or six, in this case, he won't. And I would just look over here to see who Hadfield would have turned the puck over to. Uh, and other than that, again, so here we're not, uh, again, here too, we're not looking at the team defense. Hadfield is not at home. When we come down here, though, seven, again, that's going to be a shot. Eight will be a shot. Ten will be a shot. Fourteen, twelve. These are all shot, really. So Vic Hadfield is benefiting here from Hodge not being a very... Uh, very staunch defender, and Esposito's defense has been adjusted down to one. You know, if I look maybe over here on a heavier side, now Raj Gilbert, because, you know, Gilbert being a really good player, but now I've got Bobby Orr, Johnny Busick, and Phil Esposito, this adjusts to a seven instead of a five. So, like, for example here, and I won't show it roll by roll for this one, but uh, this uh, this six here, this value of six, Again, it has to be equal to or greater than in order to have a shot on goal. So because six is lower than seven, Gilbert would turn the puck over in this case. Uh, this six, so he's turning the puck over here as well. Seven, he would have a shot because this would be equal to, again, or plus Busick plus Esposito adjusted. Uh, D6 here, he would not have a shot because or and Ori, because the D you're comparing to the opposition defense adds up to seven. Um... And I don't see anything here necessarily that we didn't already see on Hadfield's card. Actually, no, a couple of these. These P's here, these are just passes automatically. But the main reason I wanted to do this video, though, and sorry that I got away from it a bit there like I do best, is that I want to talk about uh, team defense and my adjusted, simplified team defense, which... So for the center, you're looking at left defense plus right defense plus center minus two. When the right wing of the right defense is the puck, I go left wing plus left defense plus center minus one, uh, which again, half the time, a lot of the time is going to be similar. It can't work with the exact percentage. Maybe it's not exactly half, but a lot of the time it's going to be the same anyway. It's going to be the same. It will add up to the same team defense anyway. Sometimes it will not. And you could argue, OK, that's slightly less realistic if you're looking for the most granular, realistic thing. Uh, me, I'm looking to to play you know and, and play fast so uh this is what i do I, again i don't use the game board where i'm looking for the row of three like left wing here one two three left defenseman here one two three center here one two three uh right defenseman one two three right wing one two three i'm not looking for a row of three i'm looking for a triangle so in my case here uh hadfield has possession of the puck this is my triangle right here Right, you can draw a triangle right there. I'm looking to these three for the team defense. If uh, Let's give it to the right defenseman. So Nielsen on the right side, uh, he has the puck. I'm going to make a triangle here. I'm looking to these one, two, three, and I'm taking one from whatever the, the uh, forwards rating is, which in this case would be correct for Esposito to adjust to one. But if I see a one, I'll adjust it to zero, a three to two, and... Uh, and uh, and uh, a four to a three. So, so I so basically with my simplified version, I actually give some benefit to centers when their defense rating is four. And again, make no apologies for that. So, 
uh, th th this is how I do it. This is how I've done it for a long time. And I do think that this is a little simpler uh, than, um, but at the same time, again, it is, it, it's simpler, but it's also very similar. Like this would still be a seven. So everything that I showed about Gilbert would still apply. This would still be a six adjusted down to a five. And so everything that I showed about Hadfield would still apply there. So, uh, so I hope that I've covered that adequately. Uh, I have that funny feeling that I've forgotten something, but let me know if you have any questions about this. Again, you can probably hear it in my voice. My voice is just going, but again, I'd rather do this and upload it than be thinking about this later on. It's, um, yeah, it's just something. And this is going to be, this should actually maybe double as a preview for the round one uh, playoff matchup in the 68 project here. And, but for this video as well, I did want to make sure that I had all original Rangers and original Bruins. So I subbed up Bob Bond there for Don Ori and uh, Larry Cahan for... One of them, Harry Howell, I think. So, yeah, and I, and I put the gag line together in the 789. Uh, I guess so I only talked about the left side and the right side, right? That's the other thing. So like Rattel, in his case, let's say he has the puck. Because, again, if Dave's watching, I just want to be New York trying to penetrate on uh, Boston. Uh Esposito plus or plus Ori again, add up to nine. And again, look, I'm drawing a triangle. And this is what I do as I'm rolling my way through. I draw triangles with my eyes. Uh, I'm going to subtract two. So it just adds up to seven here in this case. If Esposito were a three or a four, again, that would be an eight or a nine. Uh, but in this case, yeah, minus two. And actually it'd be the same over here, I guess, three, seven, nine, and then minus two. So for Rattel's sake, uh, D5, this is not a shot because Or and Ori are too good. This would be a penalty if the red die is a one, but not a penalty if it's higher than that. John Rattel is not at home. Turn the puck over, stop looking. 11, this is going to be a shot. But again, here the white dice can only add up to two. So even with the blue four, the white dice, dice adding up to two, that's not going to come up very often. Uh, three, this is not going to be a shot for Rattel. Five, not going to be a shot. Any of these numbers that are lower than seven, if it is seven exactly, this is a shot because, again, and it indicates this in the book and on the game chart, it's equal to or greater than. Uh, shot, automatic pass, shot with a possible rebound, turned over to the defense because, again, seven is greater than six. Uh, this is all for even strength play, by the way, as well. This is in the power play. You would add one to what, what's known in the book as the end score. The end score is just basically a whole number. It's... Uh, it's uh, so no symbol or letter uh, adjacent to the number. You're just looking at the number itself. Those get a plus one on uh, the power play. Uh, and But of course, the, the, that's for another video because again, the defense as well get adjusted on the power play. And maybe sometime I can do a video where again, I blow it up, you know, what's a little bit of what's in the chart there and put it on the board and have a look at it this way. Uh, so... Anyway, hopefully that uh, that illustrates uh, some examples. Maybe I guess the only other way that I could probably uh, add to this is so maybe some dice and trivia because that makes everything better. So here we go. Let's see again. We it's uh, we'll start with Hadfield again. So Hadfield has possession, and uh, the roll here is uh, four ten. The white dice adding up to ten, and the blue four. Uh, let's have a look here for Hadfield. Watch this not test the team defense. Oh no, it does. So it's a six. So again, I'm looking at my triangle here, and it's a five, right? So Hadfield will have a shot on goal in this case. Uh, if, uh, let's see now, let's give the puck to uh, Rod Gilbert. Okay, Gilbert in this case, three, seven. So three, seven, that's actually probably not gonna, going to assess the team defense. Three, seven is a passing with a three. So because there are three intimidation bars here, Gilbert is unable to complete the pass successfully. And uh, the red five indicates the right wing, so the puck will go to Ken Hodge. So you know what? Let's uh, roll for Hodge's sake. Now, and Hodge, again, he's going to be looking at the team defense here, which also adds up to five, three, four, six, but then I'm adjusting Rattel. And it'd be the same whether I use the Bones original adjustment in this case or my simplified adjustment. Uh, so we get a five, six here for Hodge. Now it's Boston, so watch it be a penalty. Five, six here, 14, which is basically the max value you can get in this. Anytime you see a 14, stop rolling or stop looking, stop thinking, and just roll for the shot. Uh, Hodge definitely is a shot here with a value of five, six. Uh, if we give it, let's see, let's give it to Don Ori though instead. So let's say Ori has the puck now. And this is a roll of a two, eight. So if I look in Ori's character for a two, eight, watch this be a penalty. That's a two. 
So that will not be a shot on goal, or he will have turned the puck over to four. Four is the center in the opposition. Now Jean Rattel has possession. So let's, let's uh, you know, for Jean Rattel now, let's just kind of go back and forth here. Because, again, I think this shows the beauty of the game as well in that, you know, how, how the puck changes hands. Remembering that, you know, it's a bit highlight-ish and 24 seconds have transpired for every time that you're rolling in a player's what's known in the uh, book is the action code matrix. So Rattel here, he's got a 6'11". And the 6-11, that's actually just going to be a stoppage of play. That's an eye, that's an icing. So that'd be a face-off in New York's defense uh, end. Be a face-off in New York's end of the ice. Uh, defensive zone, I mean. So anyway, uh, so let's let's roll for Rattel again, see if we get something different here. So the 6-7, uh, that's actually going to bring up, uh, he's going to try to get into position to take a shot on goal. So uh, the red two there, there is, uh, sorry, one, yeah, the red two means I have to check the pass bonus, but the only pass bonus that I have here, uh, Rattelis doesn't count because he's the puck holder in this case. So I'm looking to Gilbert and it's a one because that's a red two. It's been turned over. So it's going to go now to Esposito. Let's let Esposito try to penetrate on the blue shirt Steve. Uh, team defense even. So 6-2 for Esposito. 6-2 actually, so he's just going to try to split the D. We can ignore the team defense. This is just the two defenders only, the D. It's a pure defense, and that's a D7. 4 and 3, they add up to 7, but again, it's equal to or greater than, so Phil Esposito has a shot on goal there. And uh, let's do another roll for Esposito, though, see if we can get the team defense coming up. So the 110 here with the 13. That's going to be a shot on goal because that's higher than 3 plus 4 plus 2, which is 9, minus 2 is 7. So it's one of those things that honestly, the three best ways, I think, like it, it probably to any first timer, it seems, um, I don't know, for lack of a better way of putting it at this time, at this hour and in this state, like a bit much, but the three best ways, I guess, to get a handle on it are just get used to it, get used to it, and get used to it. So in other words, play, play, and play. Uh, you will get a handle on it. You will get the hang of it. If I can, then anyone can, right? So, um, yeah. And, and again, there is, uh, just to show again real quickly, the team defense. And again, the adjustment, just think about the reaching center, the center who sort of has to cheat a bit, has to compromise his position. And then my simplified and adjusted because I don't want to remember when I'm, you know, mid flow throwing the dice that a three and a four also adjust to a two and that a one and a two also adjust to a one. So I just universally subtract one from whatever the center's rating is. When it's a when it's a wing or a defense, I universally subtract one. And then when it's uh, the center who's looking to drive to the net, I just do it the exact same as it's done in the actual game hockey bones, right? With the left defense plus right defense plus center ratings added up minus two. Anyway, I've done my best here. Let me feel free to let me know. Let me know questions and comments. That's, that's awesome. If uh, there's something here that, you know, I haven't covered that you would like me to have covered or haven't explained clearly uh, enough, you know, to your liking. However, please, you know, don't hesitate. You can fire off a comment or an email if you want to as well. It's hockeyunreal at gmail.com. If you'd rather ask privately than publicly, that's fine as well. So, all right. Anyway, I think uh, that, uh, yeah, you know, it's the end of the day. The day is done. There's no coffee there in the mug. So, all right. Um, yes. Bye for now.